Here we are again, Truck and Trailer Tuesday on Tractor Time with Tim, and we've still got Trooper Hoover. I like that name, Trooper Hoover. It's got a good ring. I'm, I'm second generation Trooper Hoover, so. But my, my, my old man, he's got the better. His initials were Michael Robert, so his nameplate said Mr. Hoover. So you can't, you can't, I mean, you can't beat that. All the. Can't beat that. Now, you've actually seen a couple of our videos, right? Yes. You, you saw yes. one in particular where I tried to go through how I secured my mini excavator to the trailer. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I got all mixed up in numbers. I was doing my best to try to explain the load securement rules. And I thought maybe it might be good for you to go through it again and see, yeah. if, see where I was wrong, see where I was right. But anyway, to help me understand how to secure a load and hopefully yeah. under, our viewers can learn too. Exactly, and, and when it comes to load securement, the big thing is, yes, there's a difference between the state law that's real thin on numbers and what you need to do and what's commercially out there. You know, So when it comes to the federal regulations, there's a lot more verbiage and codes and different things you need to do. But, but the big thing, rule of thumb, when, when private enti entity like this the prettier you make it look, the better it's going to be. So in this case, looking at this setup here, which Tim, you would know, what, what's this thing weigh? What's I think it's somewhere weigh? between 14 and 1800 pounds. 14, 1800 pounds. So, so the rule of thumb when it comes commercially is anything less than 10,000 pounds, you would only need one tie down on the front and one tie down on the rear. So when you rolled in like this, four points of securement, adequate, everything's good, tight, proper, no no damage in the strapping. All the strapping has the proper working load limit tags on it. You, you can't beat this. This is good as it's going to get. Let so, me rewind there a little bit. Mm -hmm. Anything less than 10,000 pounds only requires one front and one back. One front and one back. Mm -hmm. okay. And then when it comes to machinery, special machinery, they, they like that 10,001 pound cutoff. Anything less required one to the front, one to the rear. Anything greater than that, that's when it gets into four corners, accessory equipment, and all of that. So looking at this, yes, looks real good. You look over here uh -oh. with, the, uh -oh. <laughs> with the bucket uh -oh. in the back, something to think about is, okay, is the load gonna shift? Is it gonna affect the handling of the vehicle? Stuff like that. Let's step so up we there kinda, and look. I'm afraid I'm in trouble on this one. Well, let, let's back up a little bit. Let's back up a little bit. Cause I, I wanna show you, point out a few things and, and the reason why we bring that up. So when we got cargo located in a bed like this, we gotta think, is it gonna shift or move and affect the handling of the vehicle? Is it gonna fly out? Probably not gonna fly out, which, I know you've seen some of the potholes we got around here, probably, <laughs> but I don't think there's any that bad. So I don't think this is just gonna lift off and take off. So now we gotta look at the next thing. Is it gonna slide? Is it gonna move? Well, looking at your good bed liner in here, it's a rough wood pallet, and I'm a big guy, and I can't get that sucker to move without. It's coming up in your favor, Tim, because it, it's, it's looking better. It's looking better. So we've got the, the friction, with the pallet, it's strapped to the pallet, it's contained inside the bed, it's shown no sign of shifting, so it's gonna be all right. But if it's something like taller, say the bucket, say they had it standing up on its side, now we've got tipping, now you need to throw some straps or chain or something like that. Or lumber, you know, dress lumber sticking out the back. It's now out to where it could slide out, something like that. But in this case, taking everything into factor, so this it's is kind of, a, right. it, it, almost, it sounds like a judgment call to me. It, it can be, it can be. Because say, say you didn't have this bed liner, say it was just a slick bed. Well, and, and say it was one of those deals, you pulled in and you pulled in the bay here, you hit the brakes and we heard it slide to the front, <laughs> pound, you know, hit the back. So when you're Careful. pulling into the bay, be very gentle on yes, the brakes. Yes, gentle on the brakes, <laughs> gentle on the brakes, exactly. So, you know. So, but we've not seen any signs of that. So that, those are just little things that us as inspectors were looking for. And of course, being a private individual, the state laws are just a little bit more in your favor versus the commercial. But again, what we're really talking about with you today and with your viewers is just plain safety. I yeah. mean, you know, you don't want this going through your back windshield. You don't want it right. coming out the back. So, so those are just things. So if it appears it's gonna so. slide around, 
strap even, it down. Strap it down. Yeah. When in That's, doubt, strap it down. You're never going to get a ticket for too many straps or having something strapped down. Okay. But if it's in the middle of the road, probably going to get a ticket. So. Okay. So we talked about, well, you said strap it down. Um, we get a lot of people responding with comments that says, no, we have to have chains. We can't have straps. The reg regulations say securement. It needs securement. So you get a lot of diehard commercial drivers. It's chains, chains, chains all the way, no straps. But the thing is, when it comes to federal regs and everything, a strap, as long as it's got a weight rating stuff, uh, chains, what you got there, that's considered, in, in this case here, if you had rope, I mean across it, tied around it, that's securement, it, it's preventing that. Of course, there are different standards. Say the bucket was turned up on end, the knife edge was pointed up, and you threw a strap over that knife edge. Of course, with no edge protection, it's gonna damage the strap. But if you had a chain, a chain may not get that, that same abrasion. Having uh, items like that. Can we use something like, like this on our strap to, to put over the top of it? To, Absolutely, to... and that's a perfect edge protection. So, and even when it comes to the federal regulations, if we see something strapped down, but there's, it's basically rubbing that strap, that's a separate violation in itself, not having proper edge protection. Okay. So that's where a lot of it gets that pe people are like, oh, you gotta have chains versus straps. And then too, a lot of it is your chain obviously has better weight ratings. So that's why a lot of, real quick, if you're securing something really heavy, you're gonna go chains rather than straps. So, okay. so that's so kind of where that breaks Several down. times during this discussion, you've alluded to working load limits, and I got all bogged down in the numbers in, in my video. And so maybe you could give us, let's start with the under 10,000 pounds. We need one in front, one in back. How much working load limit do we need? Part of the confusion when it comes to load securement is there's a variety of, uh, and, and you did real well, you said, hey, there's codes for vehicle equipment, uh, concrete pipe, different things of that nature. So when it comes to just the general rule of load securement, rule number one is, so say this vehicle here, let, let's just say 2,000 pounds for my simple math skills. So if an object's 2,000 pounds, you have to cover half of that weight with some type of securement. Okay. So half of that's a thousand pounds. So you're going to have to have a thousand pounds of load securement on that. Okay. And then they jump it up and they say, but if it's a vehicle that weighs less than 10, we want you to have something on the front and on the rear. So we got to add that to that in a sense. So if you've got a vehicle that weighs 8,000 pounds, we got to cover 4,000 pounds with the working load limit. So then we look at it and we go, okay, it's 8,000 pounds, it's under 10, it needs a bare minimum of two. So we're gonna need something to do 2,000 pounds and 2,000 pounds. But that adds into the fact of, if you look at load securement, if it attaches to the vehicle, to the object, whatever it is, it automatically cuts it in half. So now we've gotta take that in consideration. So that 2,000 and 2,000, you got to be real careful. And if it's, say, it's a 2,000 pound strap, a typical two inch strap is roughly 2,000. So you got a 2,000, a 2,000, but it hooks the machine, comes down to the deck, those are automatically cut in half. So you got a 1,000, 1,000. So in that case, you would almost need your additional straps to help you out. So looking at, looking at this here, each of these straps you said was 11.6? 1166 pounds. Yeah, 1166 pounds. So we'll just call it 12,000 just for simple 1, math. 100, yeah. So, uh, yeah, 1200. <laughs> um, so we look at the 1200. So each of these straps now are doing 600 pounds. So we got 600, 600, 600, 600. And we just have to make sure that since all four are tight, that's 600 all the way around and it's got to, it's got to be that Half could that. that could handle up to 4,800 pound load. Correct. Am I right? Correct. So that's 600 times four. That's 2,400, and then we that has to be handled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's half a dozen different ways to figure that, but to make it simple, whatever it is, if it's going from the trailer to the load, take it by half, and you got to cover half of whatever it is, and then 
pretty well in what your, your activities are doing. A lot of your equipment's 10,000 pounds or less. So that's kind of the good rule of thumb. And then of course, when it bumps up 10,001 or more, you know, hey, definitely I need the four corners and any accessory equipment's gotta be lowered and secured or factory locked in. We have a mini excavator mm -hmm. and um, it has a boom. It's under 10,000 pounds. Does the boom need to be a, uh, secured separately? Um, that's kind of fell into a little bit of a gray area because the only interpretations are for the larger equipment. But again, with it being eight, 9,000 pounds, why not? Because if you've got a strap up and over that bucket, that's getting factored into that half amount. So it's just gonna help you. Okay. So when in doubt, strap it down. And worst case if, is, is something loosens up, now you get that extra strap to take the load. What other questions or, or concerns or, I don't know, just confusion do you see on load securement? There's, there's kind of two ways folks have learned this. They've either learned it the hard way or they've learned it from grandpa that taught them how to do it and they're convinced that it's right. Big thing is, is just a little bit of negligence. When in doubt, ask. When in doubt, if, if someone's trying to tell you a different way, they've probably learned it the hard way or, or just kind of be open to that, especially the commercial guys or, or ask. You know, like I said, I've got the Facebook page, more than welcome that if you folks have any questions, contact us, let us know. More than likely you're gonna contact me. I love load securement. <laughs> the other inspectors, I've, I've had phone calls from across the state. Hey, I've got a John Deere whatever chain down with four chains or this, this, and this. What else do I need? Well, he needs this, this, and this, and you got three out of services, so. It, one thing that, uh, that I love when we've, just in our travels with Tractor Time with Tim, we find people that are passionate about their work. And uh, we found another one here, Trooper Hoover. And uh, what's that Facebook page again? It's uh, Indiana State Police Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division. So like I said, it's, it's targeted more for the commercial over the road guys, but guys, when it comes to load securement, feel free to hit that message button. Like I said, it's gonna come to me and my cell phone and I'll be able to answer those, those questions for I'm you. I'm pretty sure so. he'll be able to answer them too. He's He's forgot more information about load securement and all the other truck trailer regulations than I'll probably ever understand. And, uh, and so I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching everybody. Take a look at the Facebook page that we just mentioned that I've already forgotten. <laughs> and we'll see you next yeah. time on Track Your Time with Tim. So if that tag had come off and it wasn't there, would we get cited for that? It would be considered zero.